Various sources on social media have the Toronto Raptors interested in acquiring Joel Embiid from the Philadelphia 76ers, but how accurate are these trade rumors? Welcome to Amateur Hour Sports, where we are on our way to 600 subscribers on the channel. So if you like what you see at any point in today's video, you want more NBA content with a focus on the Toronto Raptors, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with all that content. But today's topic, Joel Embiid and a possible link to the Toronto Raptors. A lot of people have been making a bit of a buzz about this on social media regarding if the Raptors can acquire his services and if they should in fact acquire Joel Embiid's services. So to start off, Joel Embiid is a great player. I think he had an off season with the Philadelphia 76ers. At only 26 years old, yes, you know, injuries have been a bit of an issue for Joel Embiid. I think that Embiid has the ability to be MVP level. Even at the center position where it's very difficult to win that award, I think Joel Embiid possesses the characteristics necessary to win that award. I don't think he's ever going to do it, but I think that if he's utilized correctly and he plays at the best of his ability for a full season, he is MVP caliber. Last season, he averaged 23 points per game and 11.6 rebounds per game, which is very impressive, but less impressive than the season before where he averaged 27 and a half points per game and 14 rebounds per game i think with the size and the athleticism and the shooting ability combined for joel Embiid, he should be putting up numbers like that every season 27 points 13 rebounds plus because nothing is stopping him there's really nothing that can stop joel Embiid from getting his in the paint i think the biggest issue with his game is well one small issue is having to share a court with Ben Simmons where the paint's going to be clogged constantly. People don't have to D up Ben Simmons on the perimeter. Therefore, more of a collapsed paint. It's all crowded. Joel Embiid gets less space. Second of all, Joel Embiid spends much too much time on the perimeter himself. I think he needs to park himself in the paint. Sometimes, of course, you're spreading the floor that's necessary for the 2020 modern NBA. So spread the floor sometimes, hit your shots, but doesn't hit them at this tremendous clip. I think, you know, if he takes maybe two three-pointers a game instead of taking near three or four, which he's taking right now, I think that would benefit his game a lot more. But the trade scenario in question here has the Toronto Raptors sending the Philadelphia 76ers, surprise, surprise, Kyle Lowry involved in another trade rumor, Terrence Davis, and a first-round pick. Not this one upcoming, but a 2021 first round pick. So the Raptors would be giving up a lot. And obviously the 76 are giving up a franchise player. I think that if you stake an entire franchise on either Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid, just because of the characteristics Ben Simmons brings you as a playmaker, I would go with him. But there's a big argument there. I think that, you know, if you really want to commit to one or the other, I don't think the 76ers want to do that. I think Ben Simmons is the better one because you build a Giannis-like team around him where Ben Simmons can just drive in the paint. If he gets doubled, he can kick. Sort of the way Giannis plays, drive and kick, place shooters all around him. If you did that with Ben Simmons, I think you'd have a lot more success than building around a center. I don't think the modern NBA is designed to build around a center being your best player unless they're in a special special circumstance like let's say you're playing anthony davis at the five but even still the pelicans really got nowhere with anthony davis playing at the five so even a guy as talented as him teams struggle to build around the center so 76 i think it's much more fruitful for them to build around ben simmons but still they probably don't want to trade either of them and doc rivers has already said that these are two elite players they've won with both of them on the court and he doesn't see why they can't be a winning franchise with both ben simmons and joel Embiid on the court the toronto raptors would be giving up in this scenario a franchise player caliber in kyle lowry you got terrence davis an ascending young player guy i think can be a six man for the toronto raptors later on in his career and a first round pick in 2021 and the raptors are not shy when it comes to trading first round picks they do that very often i think for this trade well not only do i see it being very difficult for both teams to accept i just wouldn't make this trade to begin with this is not a trade i am a fan of 
at all. Kyle Lowry is a guy who is a game changer on the court for the Toronto Raptors, and everybody always tries to throw him immediately in any sort of trade discussions. And the only reason I would actually trade Kyle Lowry, because not that I would really want to, but I would be open to doing it if it would significantly, significantly benefit my franchise. And in this scenario for the Toronto Raptors, I don't think this trade significantly favors the Toronto Raptors, and that is why I would not make it. I think on the other end, 76ers fans, they wouldn't want to trade for a 34-year-old on a one-year contract for a franchise player in Joel Embiid. Maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe I'm wrong about how they feel about Joel Embiid. But personally, as a Raptors fan, I would not move on from Kyle Lowry just yet in order to acquire Joel Embiid. Like I was saying, you can't really stake your franchise on building around a center. So building around Joel Embiid, I don't think is the smartest move for the Toronto Raptors. Obviously, you still have Pascal Siakam, but there's a lack of guard play, a lack of ball handlers, if you were to give away Kyle Lowry for Joel Embiid. I think that having Joel Embiid and being able to really nurture him as a player, I think the Raptors would do a better job in, you know, making sure he's doing his job in the paint. That would probably be better done by the Toronto Raptors and the 76ers based on the coaching staffs, but 76 have a new coaching staff maybe they can tinker his game a little bit make him a little bit better maybe they can make that three point percentage just that little bit better it can unlock some different aspects and we know how great of a defender Joel Embiid is on the interior so lots that can be played with with the Toronto Raptors but still I'm not liking this enough to trade away Kyle Lowry Terrence Davis and a first round pick I would rather spend the one year with Kyle Lowry because I think that the Raptors have a higher chance of success if they were to keep Kyle Lowry for the season than Joel Embiid for the next season. And also not to mention the importance of Terrence Davis and I think he's going to take a bigger role on next season for the Toronto Raptors. One thing that would slightly make sense for the Toronto Raptors in this trade scenario is that Joel Embiid is going to be making less money than Kyle Lowry next year. So if you free up that $4 million that it would free up by trading Kyle Lowry for Joel Embiid, you could probably use that money and lure back a guy like Fred Van Vliet. But then Serge Ibaka, you would no longer need, so he would be gone. So sure, it's a bit of a money saver and helps you get Fred if you trade Kyle Lowry, but what does it do for your team? Does Joel Embiid influence winning in the way that Kyle Lowry does? I'm not 100% sure if that's the case. Joel Embiid is no doubt a more talented player at this stage of their careers, but does he influence winning basketball the way Kyle Lowry does? That's one, yeah, again, I can't, I can't confirm nor deny, but I know that Kyle Lowry is an absolute winner on the court in anything he does. It's not just points. It's not just assists. It's the little nuances of his game, the little swings in possession, the little swings in momentum that he can create on defense, taking charges, his hustle stats. Those little things allow for the Raptors to win, and those little things are created by a guy like Kyle Lowry, who had one of his best seasons yet as a Raptor last season. I think he can be an all-star again this season so why would you bother trying to move Kyle Lowry if it's not significantly benefiting your team and in this scenario I just don't think it does I think when it comes to Kyle Lowry there's so many people that are just so quick to want to talk about trading him again like I made a video talking about the possibility of trading Kyle Lowry but I think that in that scenario the video I made if you want to check it out in that scenario, it benefits the Raptors so much that you can part way with Kyle Lowry because it's just such a significant benefit for the future of your franchise. And in this scenario with Joel Embiid, I do not think that is the case. Another big underrated aspect about the Toronto Raptors game is that sure, they may not be the most talented team on paper when compared to the likes of maybe the Boston Celtics, maybe the Milwaukee Bucks. But what the Raptors do possess is such a cohesive unit with so much chemistry. The chemistry is really what fuels this team. It's such a likable group of players and they enjoy playing with each other. And you can absolutely see that on the court. And when you add in a guy like Joel Embiid, who has a little bit of a history of not being the best guy to have in the dressing room, maybe maybe it can be a bit disruptive obviously I'm not in those situations I don't know firsthand but there's there's reports there's things out there against Joel Embiid as a personality to have within your team and if he's not willing to 
give that away if he's not willing to change to really be part of this unit that the raptors have created then there's absolutely no reason to want to go out and try to give away this much in order to acquire him much less the fact that i don't think the 76ers would really want to entertain a deal like this you know, it'd be nice that if we are going to trade Kyle Lowry, which we don't have to at all, we don't have to do that in any way whatsoever. But if we do, it'd be nice to send him to Philly, a team who is going to be competitive again, and Kyle Lowry's hometown. You know, good Philly boy gets to go home to end off his career or who knows, maybe Kyle Lowry is Thomas will move on again. But still, would be nice to send him there if we do send him anywhere. But Philly fans, I don't know if there's any of you watching, but do Philly fans even want to acquire Kyle Lowry in this scenario? I think it would help them in quite a bit. Having Kyle Lowry as your point guard, finally a point guard who can shoot, it would allow Ben Simmons to move to maybe the three or four slot where he can be a bit of a point forward still, but also much less of a cluttered pain with him. When you take away Joel Embiid from the equation, Ben Simmons gets to the rim a lot a lot more i think ben simmons is another guy who has the skill set to be an mvp caliber player in the future but just needs to needs to develop that shot which he just does not seem willing to do i think with a new coach in doc rivers absolutely he's going to be on ben simmons to get that shot in but ultimately it is up to the player there's no indication that ben simmons can't shoot because when he has shot in preseason and in nothing games against the new york knicks and the cleveland cavaliers he can hit threes. He just doesn't shoot them. He is unwilling to take them in the game. It's it's astounding. And I think Brett Brown didn't do a good enough job in saying, look, you got to change for our team to be more successful. And ultimately, that never happened. Brett Brown, you know, it's not just on Ben Simmons not shooting, but Brett Brown, I don't think was the best coach for that team. I think they have a good coach who can help them unlock different aspects of their game now. But I think Doc Rivers is going to want to work with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons because they are such talented players. You wouldn't want to give one away. And the Raptors, I think they're giving away a little too much in this scenario. I think it's ultimately a bad trade for both teams. When you look at it on the grand scheme, Kyle Lowry and Terrence Davis, a future first round pick for Joel Embiid. Both teams, I think, go away with this unhappy. So I think it's best to put this rumor to bed. The Raptors do not need to acquire Joel Embiid. And the 76ers do not need to try and trade him. So we'll end it on that. What do you guys make of this trade? Do you think Joel Embiid would be a good fit for the Toronto Raptors? What would you give away in order to make that trade happen? And do you think the trade that I was explaining earlier, Lowry, Davis, and a first round pick for Joel Embiid, do you think that is a good trade or not? Let me know in the comments down below regarding that. But that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are still here, please like the video if you like and subscribe to Amateur Sports for more content just like this. NBA content with a focus on the Toronto Raptors four days a week. Make sure you hit that notification bell as well to stay up to date with all the future content. At the end of the day, I believe what I say. If you disagree, that is okay. We will see you again next time for another video.